Kia ora year 12 and year 13. This is the second question from today's scholarship calculus session and I'm making it mainly for the people who couldn't come in because of COVID level 2. So this is going to be slightly slower probably than usual. Um, it's quite a tough question to figure out what's being asked and I talked about that in class today a little bit. But once you've seen what you've got to do, the maths in it is actually not too bad. The first thing to note is that Q is in this question for part B and so we don't need to worry about it, right? And it's kind of off-putting. So we've got two satellites, P and Q, and they are travelling anti-clockwise along the same elliptical orbit around a planet centre O, so the, and such that the lines OP and OQ are always perpendicular. Right, but the one we're interested in is point P. Right, we've got the equation of an ellipse, and the satellite P is represented by this point here. So we're working in polar form. Um, now, P shines, satellite P shines a microwave in the directions perpendicular to its direction of motion. So let's look at what's happening. We've got this point here is travelling around. And as it does that, it's putting out a microwave beam. And so if the direction of motion you can think of has been given by a series of tangents, the microwave beam, beam is going to be the normal to the curve. And we have to show that when theta is a particular value, the beam cuts the vertical plane, which is represented by the y-axis, at this vertical distance below the level of the satellite. So what is that getting at? Well, I drew another ellipse down here. And once you see this, the question breaks down pretty quickly. So here's my point P, and there's the normal. And we need to show that the vertical distance between this point here and where it cuts the vertical plane is this amount here that I'm circling now. So what we're looking for is to find the coordinates of this point and then we're going to find the distance here which will be that. So what do we have to do? Well the first thing we've got to do is to find the gradient of the tangent and then get the gradient of the normal. From there we're going to use, well I'm going to use the point gradient version to find the equation of the normal. It's fine also if you want to try using y equals mx plus c. Um, I don't know if it's going to work out more tidily or messier. And then lastly we're going to find the distance, but that's the easy part. So let's start off by doing the gradient. We've got x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Differentiating implicitly gives me this. 2x over a squared plus 2y over b squared times dy by dx equals 0. Rearranging gives me dy by dx is equal to this, negative 2x over a squared times b squared over 2y, and that cleans up to negative b squared x over a squared y. So that's for the tangent. So for the normal, my gradient is going to be this, a squared y over b squared x. Now, because we're working with a specific value of theta, which is pi on 4, I might as well start substituting in to clean things up. So x is equal to a cos pi on 4, which is a on root 2. Really sorry about the clicking of the stylus on the screen, guys. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm sure one of you does have an idea, and if you know how to stop it happening, just send me an email. So y is equal to b over root 2. So let's put those in now and find out the normal gradient at this particular point. So we've got a squared times b on root 2 divided by b squared times x, which is a on root 2. So the root 2s obviously disappear. a squared b on ab squared. And that equals what? What have we got? That simplifies very nicely, right? So that gives us just a over b. Okay, that's just in this particular case. In the general case, it's got a tan theta in it. Right, so now we're ready to find the equation of the line. So y minus y1 
is equal to m into x minus x1. And the point is a on root 2, b on root 2. So y minus b on root 2 is equal to a over b times this. Well, I'm going to clean that up and rearrange. Something's gone wrong there. I've got a minus sign missing. Yep, that is definitely not a plus. Right, there we are. That's a minus. So what have we got? Well, here's my normal line. Whoosh. And here's point P up here. So this point here, P, is at A on root 2, B on root 2. And this point here is at X equals 0 and negative a squared over that plus b on root 2. So if we look at this now, and I'm going to draw in the triangle in here, then the vertical distance is b on root 2 well, we can do it um, mechanically. Or we can just look at it and say, well, this bit is the B on root 2 part. And this bit down here is a negative number. So this is negative A squared on B root 2 minus B on root 2. So that distance there, which is this distance here, is just the modulus of this. So it's B on root 2, or the positive part of it, right? B on root 2 plus a squared on b root 2 minus b on root 2. Now if you're confused by that very last bit, let's just think of a really simple example from year 12. If I've got the y intersect here at negative 3, then the distance, vertical distance here, is not negative 3, but it's 3. And that's all that I'm doing with this bit here. So we're there, right? The vertical distance simplifies to give me the result that we wanted, which is a squared on b root 2. I think but that question's slightly easier than the third one about the tangent. Um, and question one that I've already videoed a few years ago is easier still. Let me know if you've got any questions or problems with it or if you had a different way of doing it. And thanks for watching.